Hello. In this video, we are going to explore structure activity relationships in simple alcohols. Here we see the computed structure for the simplest alcohol, methanol, clearly showing the distinctive functional group, the hydroxyl OH group. The property we are exploring is the acidity of alcohols. The tendency for an alcohol such as methanol to lose H plus a proton and thereby form its conjugate base, shown here, methoxide, with its computed structure. Suppose we replace one of the hydrogen atoms attached to carbon in methanol with a very electronegative element such as fluorine. In the process, we get fluoromethanol with the structure shown here. Fluoromethanol has acidic properties, and in the process of acting like an acid, it loses a proton H plus to form the fluoromethoxide ion with the computed structure shown here. We can continue the process of adding fluorine atoms to the carbon in the process generating what is here difluoromethanol. This here is the conjugate base of difluoromethanol, difluoromethoxide anion. If we take this idea to its logical conclusion, we can replace all three of the methyl hydrogens with fluorine atoms in the process forming trifluoromethanol. The conjugate base of trifluoromethanol is the trifluoromethoxy anion with the computed structure shown right here. Using electronic structure calculations, we can compute the enthalpies of reaction for the loss of a proton by each of these methanols. The enthalpy, the larger the enthalpy, the weaker the acid, the smaller the enthalpy of reaction, the stronger the acid. And we notice the general trend as we add more fluorine atoms more of the very electronegative element that the acidity increases and it increases by a substantial amount, particularly as we add more and more fluorine atoms. So methanol is the weakest of these acids 
and trifluoromethanol is the strongest. This leads us to the general rule that electron withdrawing groups, which include the very electronegative elements like fluorine, oxygen, chlorine, stabilize the anion, the conjugate base, thereby strengthening the acid. And we see that we have the order of acidity that we calculated that the trifluoromethanol is the strongest. Another parallel way to think of this is in terms of the energy of the lone pair that is on oxygen. The higher the energy of the lone pair, the stronger the base. The lower the energy of that lone pair, the weaker the base, thereby the stronger the acid. We now want to see the effect of electron releasing groups, for which we think of alkyl groups like methyl, ethyl, and so on, and see what their effect on the acidity of alcohols is. Again, we return to our simplest alcohol, which will be our reference, methanol, CH3OH. Its conjugate base, we recall, is methoxide ion with the calculated structure shown here. If we replace one of the methyl hydrogens with another methyl group, we now have an ethyl group attached to the hydroxyl group, and we have ethanol, also known as ethyl alcohol, which is the next most complicated alcohol in the series. The conjugate base of ethanol is ethoxide ion with the computed structure shown here. Having already computed the structures of one and two carbon primary alcohols, the next in the series is the three carbon primary alcohol, one propanol, with the computed structure shown here. One propanol has the conjugate base of one propoxide with the computer structure that we have shown here. The next longest alcohol in this series is the four carbon alcohol. 1 butanol with the computed structure shown here. When 1 butanol acts as an acid, the conjugate base is the 1 butoxide ion with the structure shown. Comparing these four alcohols, we notice that the enthalpies of reaction to lose a proton are very close 
but we see a general trend that the enthalpy of reaction is largest for methanol and smallest for 1-butanol, which tells us that 1-butanol is the strongest of the acids shown and methanol is the weakest. If we file the energy of the lone pair, which is the HEFMO here, that is in the units of Hartree's, again, we see that the lower the energy of this orbital, this is the orbital that holds the lone pair on oxygen, the weaker the base therefore the stronger the conjugate acid, the alcohol, which again confirms that 1-butanol in the gas phase is the strongest acid and methanol is the weakest in the gas phase. If we proceed by analogy with the case for the electron withdrawing groups, we would expect that electron releasing groups, like the alkyl group shown, should destabilize the anion, the conjugate base, therefore making the alcohol weaker. And this seems to be true when we look at the acidities of alcohols in solvent. The strongest acid in solvent will be methanol, which is stronger than ethanol, which is stronger than 1-propanol, which is stronger than 1-butanol. This is entirely the reverse of what we see in the gas phase, where we already shown by computation that 1-butanol is the strongest acid and methanol is the weakest of the acids. Question becomes, why is this true? In the gas phase, where there is no solvent, the overwhelming effect is the polarizability of the anion, the conjugate base. As we add larger and larger alkyl groups, the groups take up more space, the electrons are more easily moved in an electric field, therefore they are more polarizable. This polarizability stabilizes the anion in the gas phase. In solution, other effects, the inductive effect and overwhelmingly the effect of solvent, counteracts the polarizability so we get a different order. One thing to notice, and we're at it the uh, tables again for your reference at the end of this video, is that while the electron withdrawing effect from fluorine is a very, very large effect in the gas phase, the effect of the electron releasing groups is rather small in the gas phase. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a happy new year. Have a good one.